Okay, today we're going to do the rest of the material that we're going to cover on finite state machines and languages. So let's start out with an example, which is on uh, page 8 of your handout, which I'll mention what it is. So we have a touchpad lock, a touch key lock, and it has 10 digits. And we want to design this finite state machine. that accepts your code, your combination. And let's say that the combination is 5130. So we're going to design it, not just look at the picture. So what is the first thing that we need to draw when we're, when we're designing a finite state machine? The start state. The start state. And that needs to have what on it to be a start state? Zero. Just needs to have an, an error going into it. Then that's clearly the start state. Okay, so we also want to label that that's the start. What's the 5130? That's the code that we're going to be that's, your, that's the code that we're going to put into it. 5130, we can pick any combination of, of numbers that we want. But 5130 is the code that's going to unlock okay. your lock. So what's the next thing I would need? In the start state, somebody's going to press starting, start, start pressing some keys, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to know what to do when someone presses a key. Well, if it's the correct, if it's the correct number 5, then it goes on to the next step. If it's a five, I want to have a state that helps me remember that the person has entered the first number correctly, right? So I need to make another state saying that the first number is correct. And if not, it should go back to, it should re, it should loop back to start. Yeah, we can do that. So this, this can be anything but five. That's one way we can do it. Now, different locks do different things, right? Some of them just like give you a message if it's if you've typed in four things and then it checks those four things. So right now we're doing just one by one. And the reason why we need to do that is because finite state machines don't have memory. Right? There's nowhere on this diagram that tells me any memory. All I get to do is know what state I'm in and what is the key that I just that I'm getting right now. And then I have to do a transition and then I don't remember the key anymore. So if you wanted to cut it off after four tries, you'd have to actually have four different sections of the machine. But if you press the wrong thing in one section, you go to the next section. And then it... That's right. If I wanted to have something that cut off after four, then I would need another series of states that ended in something that <coughs> said, you know, gave some output that said that's an incorrect combination and sent me back to the start state. So right here we're just going back to the start state and what we could do is say whenever um, whenever I go back to the start state I print a message that says you know invalid code or something like that. So I could tie an action to this arc. So whenever you make a transition you can tie an action to a finite state machine. Okay so what do we want to do next? We want to go to the next step. If I get a 1, what do I need to do? Go to the next state. I need a new state that tells me that I have the second number correct. And a 1 is the value on that transition. What if I get something besides a 1? Back to zero state. I go back to the star state. You want to go back to the start state even though that you got the first one correct? Absolutely. If someone gets the second digit wrong, I don't want them to stand there, oh, I got the five, and then guess the next digit, right? Because the, the reason why you have combinations is because there's so many different lock combinations, right? But if, if, I, if I tell them right away, if they've got the first one correct, I've narrowed it down by a factor of ten, number of things, number of combinations. Okay. 
Right, so I don't want to tell them that any of the digits are correct. I only want to tell them if the whole sequence of digits is correct. Yes? If someone starts to enter the number and hits the wrong number, how can, okay. That's another consideration. If I wanted to be able to have like a backspace key or a clear, I would have to add that to my keypad, which we're going to assume that we don't have that. Like what we'll do is we'll just, well, once it goes back to the... Halfway through it and forgot the last number and then came back later on and they're still in state four but they start over from scratch. We could. Think, we actually have seen a lot of locks that do that, right? Yeah. If you start entering some numbers and then you stop and you try to start again, it doesn't take it. Right? right? That's because they designed their machine without, you know, setting. Like you could put a timer on, you know, a little clock that would send a, you know, like a star or something to your diagram that would send it back to the start state whenever any state got the star. See what I'm saying? Like, if I wanted a timer, I could have it send input to my finite state machine to reset it. Can I ask yes. Um, I was thinking more in, in terms of efficiency. How is the user going to know that he got the first digit right anyway? You know, because this is, this is in the code, he, um, he enters a five, right? Yeah, but we don't know. Users never know on locks whether you've got the first combination right or not. So wouldn't, wouldn't it be more efficient instead of going all the way back to the start or to go back to where the first uh, original correct code was entered? Okay, there's two things here. One thing is finite state machines don't care that much about efficient, efficiency. Uh, they don't. Okay. Right. The second thing is, is, like I said before, I don't want anybody to know that they've already got the first few characters right. I don't want it to go back to some place thinking that somebody's got part of the combination. So with, with we're just going to design this okay. as simply as possible. If you want to add something else, you can make your own design specifications okay. and make your own finite well, state. Machine. I was just wondering like how they would know they got it right. They will mm -hmm. know because when we get to the, the, the end state, we'll make, a, we'll make a final state and we'll have an action associated with getting in that final state. Oh, okay. Okay, so none of these are accepting states. This is not going to give any um, anything to the user yet. You could have it so it beeps whenever they press a key, so okay, you so that they know you got some input, but not okay. whether you think it's good or not, right? Okay, yeah, that was the lines I was thinking. Right. So you could have all of these transitions have a beep. You know, so whenever anybody presses a key, they get a beep. Doesn't matter whether you do or not. Okay. So now if we enter. Five one. We need we need another transition now to get a three, right? Mm -hmm. And that means that our third character is correct. And if we get anything else, we'll go back to the start state, right? Unless you get a five. No, if I'm in a state and I get a five, I don't want to go back to the one state. Right. I want to act like they haven't entered anything. I want to go back to the start state and make them have to start over again in order to get the combination right. On the handout, it says um, if you don't, it says anything but five or one takes you from two back to one, back to start. But that's not really right, is it? It should just be anything but one. From which state? Well, it's, it's labeled different, it right? Is, See, yeah. a, a five will take you back to state one at, in any instance. So you could enter as many keys as you want as long as the terminating. Actually, yeah, we could have it so five goes here. Oh, yeah. That's coming. Okay. So, by the way, I'm not going by the diagram that's on there. I'm solving the problem here together with you all. So there are mo always multiple solutions to any problem, even finite state machines. So you can have different numbers of states. And they can mean different things in different diagrams. Okay, so this is our solution to the problem together. Okay, now after we get here, so this is the only place where I want to keep accepting fives, right? Yeah. Because I don't want to accept more ones right here. No, but if you get a five at that point, you should go back to state one also. It, it does. Right. If I get a five, if I get anything besides a three, right after I get five one, I want to go back to start. But the diagram is saying you should go back to one on yours. If you get a five at two, you should go back to one. The handout diagram yeah, it says keeps not three. going back to one every time you get a five, no matter what. 
Yeah, okay, not state well, zero, but state one. But let's go with this one that okay. I have up here. Okay. All right. All right. It's a design specification, so you could make it so that any time you get a five, you start the code over if you wanted to. That's not how I would want to do it. Yeah, it's sort of like if someone was guessing your PIN number at the ATM machine, if they were able to guess the first number, you wouldn't want them to like stop at that point where you got it right. <laughs> That's right. I don't want it to tell them that they've got any part of it right. So here we go. We're going to go now to the fourth state if we get a zero. If we get anything besides a zero at that point, we need to go back to the start state. Start state here, I would represent the start state as being no correct keys have been pressed. Right? The one state would be the very first key has been pressed correctly. And I could stay there because I, I could keep pressing the first key over and over. Now that's if you wanted to do it that way. So what you could do is after four, you know, I could build a whole other machine that after four of them it said, oops, wrong combination, even if you, if you press four or fives. But this one just stays there. As long as you keep pressing fives, it'll stay there. But it's, not, it's still not letting you in. It's not going to let you in until you put in all the numbers. Okay, here we get 5130, and that's a correct state, right? So I want this to be a final accepting state. That's what this double line means, is that's a final state, and it's accepting. Once I get here, I don't need to make any more transitions, right? So what I would do with this is I would associate, you know, unlock door with this transition. That would be my final thing there. Now this, this is not building in, you know, what if a user does this, what if they do that. This is just reading one character at a time, and as soon as you get the right combination, it unlocks the door. And then I would assume that closing the door would reset the, your machine. So you wouldn't be in that state anymore. But I'm not going to draw that on here. So remember how we built, um, you guys designed circuits at the beginning of the semester to do things. You can do finite state machines the same way. So these are like ifs, right? These arrows are like, if I get a five, go do this. And it will have a, you know, something you can do on each transition. You don't have to have anything. You could just change states. So how is this just like a computer? How is a finite state machine like a computer? And how is it not, like, what does it not do that a computer can do? do you, well, Any like ideas? you said, it's like if statements. So right. it could be like, in this case, you could do it like a whole bunch of nested ifs. If I get a five, and then if I get a one, and then if I get a three. If I don't, then I'm out of the loop. That's right. So this can be sort of thought of like a program that has a lot of if statements. Can computers keep track of memory, or do they have to pretty much do something like this to get around that so that it's sort of like it's keeping track of memory, but not really? That's a good question. Do computers have memory? The answer is yes. Most computers have memory. These don't, okay. right? So this has no memory, so that's a big difference between a finite state machine and a regular computer. So a finite state machine can do lots of the things that regular computer can do, but it doesn't have memory. So if you combine this with a stack, which is one way to do memory, then this can be a model for most computers, any computer actually. So I just wanted to point that out. These are used, finite state machines are theoretical construct, constructs that computer scientists use partly to make programs, you know, to design programs, but also when they're combined with like push down memory, it's also to see what kind of programs can computers solve. You know, what kind of problems can we solve? So if a machine like this can't answer a question, then we're going to assume that a, a computer can't answer the question. You know, a machine like this plus a memory, plus a stack. And those are called Turing machines. Hmm. So actually, Turing machines are like black boxes. If you can have a program that will do something, it has an input tape and an output tape. And all it can do is read things from the input tape and do things based on what it reads and output things on the output tape. So Turing machines are used to model what kinds of problems
we can solve with computers. And there's some, there's some cool problems that you can't model with Turing machines, and some that you can, and that's a whole other class, but I just wanted you to know what they are. So Turing machines are models of computers. And you said a Turing machine was a finite state machine. You can use a finite state machine to model what's happening inside a Turing machine. So a Turing machine is it's sort of a separate thing. It's like considered to be a black box that can do stuff based on what inputs it gets, and it can give output. But it can only do things based on the inputs and outputs. So Turing machines can have finite state machines on the inside. Okay, are there any questions so far? So let's just do um, a couple more examples. Let me make up a finite state machine and you can tell me what regular expression it, it accepts. Okay, here's a finite state machine over the language AB. So let's see if we can write a regular expression that says what this machine does. Okay, so in state zero, that's the start state, right? State one means that we got what? And then in state two, we got what? So we did zero A and then state two is one B, right? But does that really mean you got an A because there's nothing going back saying if you got anything else, return? But you wouldn't move to step state one unless you had gotten an A. If there's no transition, you assume that you get stuck in a state if you get something that doesn't have a transition. Okay, so if, if I don't draw any arrows all going back to the start or something, it means you get stuck there and you don't accept the string okay. that someone tried to put in. Because there's no instructions for the machine to do anything, so it doesn't do anything. So this is just like a computer. If you don't tell it what to do, it does nothing. Okay. Okay. So you have to tell it what to do. Okay, so what kind of strings does it accept? It, it accepts A, B. Let's just write that down. What else does it accept? A, B, A. A, B, B. A, B, A. Okay. A, B, A takes me back to the zero state, and that's not a final state, so it's not an accepting state, so I have to get what after that? A, B. A, B. So it also accepts A, B, A, A, B. What else? A, B, B, A, B. A, B, B, A, B. And then you can just keep and then all the Keep repeating those things, right? So I can, as long as I get an A, B on the front and an A, B on the end, and I keep doing like A, A, B, or B, A, B. Let's figure out how to write that. Okay, so we get A, B gets us to the two state. And then A or B gets us back to the zero state. Right, so A, B is one thing. So A, B is, I might not be writing the most efficient thing here, so we'll make it simple better later. So we can get A plus B, A, B again, right? 
So those are two ways to get to the two state. And then I can repeat. So it looks like I can actually represent this as a plus b star. Well, you have to represent oh no, a I have to get the first a b, right? A b. So I have to do this. B plus. The whole thing plus. A b plus. Right. A plus B. And then parentheses. Yeah, that's right. I don't need to simplify this anymore. This will get me back to 2. Then I just have to say that I can do what after this? I can do A plus B, A, B again. Right? So you could even say you do the whole thing. If you simplify it, you get a 1. Because the A, B into a 1, A or B, A, B. Could that 1 be A, A? Hang on a second. I, I couldn't just do, it's not A, B, or this. It's A, B, and then that, right? Okay. So, she's, she's a written down. A or B. sorry, we have A, B as one way to get to 2. Or A, B, A plus B, A, B. Right? And then I could also do A plus B, A, B again. Right, so I can keep repeating this part. So I have to do one AB, and then this stuff has to all be done together to get me back to the final state. So what I can do is I can put just AB, and then all this stuff together and put a star. I can do it zero times, or I can do it as many times as I want and get back to where I started. But I have to have an AB on the front, and then if I'm going to go into here, I have to do the whole thing to get back to an accepting state. So a lot of times in these, you're going to want to figure out what the language is they accept. To figure out the language it accepts, all you have to do is figure out what, what does the final state, what are all the ways to get into the final state. What's the star mean again? Star means it's like a power. Repeat that. Okay. However many times you want to, and it might be zero times. Can you typically write things more than one way? Like, yes, you know. my guess was a, basically those two have. big things were swapped. You can have, B, B, or B. actually the parentheses removed over. You can have A, B, and A plus B as many times as you want, as long as you end in an A, B. A, B. That's a. right. You could have also done that. Okay. Uh, you right? Just, okay. So that was a good point. You got either or. Okay. Was A, B, A plus B? A, B That's right. A. Let's write it again. So one person thought that AB and then A plus B and this thing repeated however many times and then ending in an AB would work. And that's another way to write it. So and the reason why that works is because this one has an AB on the front and this one has an AB on the end and they're equal. Like both of those are equal so it doesn't matter where I put the star as long as I do one of them. Okay, let's make up another one. <clears throat> so here's a, a regular expression. Let's make a finite state machine for it. Okay, so we have a start, always. And then we need to get an A, right? And then after that, we want to get at least one AB, and then as many ABs as we want. So what I'd like to do is say, OK, that's my first A out of the AB. So that goes to state two. And there's the B. State three is good. So I get at least that many ABs. What if I get? I have to get another AB in order to keep going, right? Or I can keep going from here. So let's pretend we just do one. If I get a B, that's an accepting state. 
Well, could you have gotten a, uh, from from the, from the start state, you got an A. Or could you have gotten a B? Um, Again, or, if I don't draw a transition, nothing happens. It's broken. It stops. The machine doesn't go anymore. No, but when I'm saying you, you got A parentheses A B plus. A A B plus, yes. Right. Okay. So so that means the A comes first. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because yeah, we you, read these in order. These are strings in sequence. Okay, I thought the other one you had uh, was A plus. Okay, A plus B. Okay. Right. Okay. The plus and the power means that it's at least one A B happens. And then I can do more ABs if I want to. Okay. okay, so now we've taken care of just this string, right? Now we have to take care of all the other ones that are like however many ABs in the middle and then a B at the end. If you go from state three to two with an A, you can do that. Yep. That's good. So if I go from state three to two with an A, then if I get another B, then I go back to state 3 and then it can let me end with another B. So this lets me do my A, Bs, but it's actually B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A. So that works. Any questions about that? If, if we hadn't thought of that, we might have tried to go to back to state 1 saying that we would get an A, B. But what What's the problem with doing that? If I put a letter on the transition, then I get an extra letter in there that I don't want. So I would have had to put an empty transition. Right? That means if I don't get anything, I just pop back in this state randomly, which is not a good thing, right? Because then your machine is non-deterministic. And it's very hard to tell what's going to happen. So if you want to know what happens, you want to figure it out in a way that doesn't have any empty transitions. Uh, question. Yes. In state three, um, it's A, B plus, right? Shouldn't the B's just continue on indefinitely over the there? The plus is on the outside of the parentheses for the A, B, so I have to repeat A, B. Got you. So it's whatever's inside the parentheses is the plus. So A, B has to be repeated an even number of times. I can't just do part of it. I have to do the whole thing. Okay, let's solve another problem. Let's design a finite state machine to do addition. So how about binary addition? So first of all, we have to figure out how to get our input. Okay, so I'm going to give you how we're going to get our input. This is a problem from another class. So what we're going to do is we're going to interlace our input. So say we have um, a string of bits, A0, A1, A2, all the way up to AN, and we have another string. So we have two of them of bits. And we want to add them. So our input is going to be interlacing this. We're going to reverse them and then interlace them. So what we'll have is, actually, these are least significant bits. And these are most significant bits. So if I were to write them for real, actually, these are in reverse. So these are reversed. And we're going to put our input like this. So each pair is going to be given in a string. And then the last thing we're going to get is a dollar sign to tell us that we're done getting our input. So we don't actually know how long the string of numbers is. What are the lines? Oh, the lines are just for us. It's not actually characters. 
So are you adding or what operation are you doing? We're going to add the two binary strings, A and B, where these are the bits of A and B. And a finite state machine doesn't have variables, right? So we have to feed it the input in a stream, right? You're adding as you go, basically. Yeah, I'm going to have to add while I go because I have no memory, right? So all I have for memory in finite state machines, we have to implement our memory with states. And I only get to remember one thing, which state I'm in. That's it. So the state can represent something, but we can't mem memorize anything else. You can augment finite state machines with variables if you want to, but if you want to make like a real one, you don't get to have any memory at all. Okay, so let, let me do an example first. So here's an input. And the two strings that breaks down into is every other bit. One, one, zero, one. And one, 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 zero. And if we reverse them, then this is 1011 and 0111, and then we add them together. This number is what? 3 plus, which number is that? 11. Sorry. This is 7, and this is 0248. 8 plus 3 is 11. All right, so those are going to add up to me 18. If we do bit by bit, one and one is zero. zero. Carry the one. One and one plus one is one, one. carry one, right? One and one is zero, carry one. So one and one is that. So that should be 18. So now you see why they're reversed, right? Because we want to start with these bits. So thank goodness this is the ones that we're going to get first in our finite state machine because the carry has to propagate through from the smallest digit up to the top digit. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is with your neighbor right now, try to come up with some ideas for solving this problem. So we want to design a finite state machine that solves the problem. Remember that we don't have any memory. We want to output what we can do on the transitions. Remember, we can have an action so you can print numbers on the transitions. So when you do a transition, you can decide to print a number. Okay, so what we want to output is this number right here. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that, and I'll come around and help. What's the name of 236? Oh, Then I have three. I if the first digit is zero, the second digit is zero. What is it? How did you do that? First is zero, and it's one. 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 I guess the second digit is one. Uh, you're going to 
zero. 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 That's why I didn't understand. So I'm wondering if you can combine those two different inputs. Yeah, so we have to be able to do that. If they enter an operator, then we know that it's one to turn it off. If they input a plus, maybe? That's what you have here. So you still have to be able to do that. Except for A from which you are going to get dollars. Zero. Okay, A. Now from A1. Okay, let's get back together for a minute and just start solving part of the problem. So what are some of the ideas you've had so far? Yeah, it was P. <laughs> it's okay if it's not right, because we're going to work on it together. So what's just anybody's idea? 32 states. 32 states? <laughs> yeah. So it's, I guess one question is, we don't know what N is. We don't know what N is, but we do know that we'll get a dollar sign at the end. Oh, they give you a dollar sign? Yes. No, no. Sent, no. Do they give you operators? Yeah, no. Do we get what? Yeah, operators? Still stuck. Operators? No. Or is it just Signing. a dollar this sign, a sign on the end of each number you get yeah. entered? Okay. In. Now, we get a, we're going to read digits, and when we get a dollar sign, we know we're done reading our input. Total inputs? Yeah. So you don't know what two numbers you have? So we read, one, we read one digit at a time. When we read the first digit, let's, let's start solving the problem, okay? We have a start state. Let's say that we read a zero. We know we need to change states because each pair of numbers that I read need to add together and give me some number for output, right? And I need to also know what a carry is, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll figure it out as we go. If I get a zero, then I'm in some state. I'll label it later. We'll just call it one for right now. Okay, now if I get another zero, then I don't have to carry anything, right? And I can just print out a zero because the first two digits add to zero. Okay. So if I get a zero, I'm going to print zero. This is my action that I'm going to do. So that's the easiest problem to solve. Is if I get two zeros in a row, I print out a zero and I feel very happy. And then like the rest of the problem, I just continue doing. So it's like I did one column of my addition so far if I got two zeros. So now I need to figure out what to do in the other columns of addition. And hopefully our machine will just solve one column at a time, and then we don't have to know how many pairs we get, right? We just have to know when to stop outputting things. Yes? Uh, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I'm sorry. So we're, we're outputting in reverse, too. We can't, re we can't output, like, in advance. So we, we're outputting in reverse also. So this, if we were to go through and do the... 8 plus 3, like we did at first, we would get 18 in reverse, too. So the first digit's going to be 0 if we got two zeros. What if I get a 1 at this point? I need to print just a 1, and there's no carry, so I can go back to the start state, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I go back to the start? Yes, I do. So you can do that. You can have two arrows going back sure. to the same state. So here we go. If I get a 1, I can print a 1. And there's no carry. I didn't have to worry about a carry. So the first digit was zero. That's what this transition is. So when I read in a zero, if I get a zero, I just print a zero. If I get a one, I just print a one, because I know there's no carry. Okay, now I have to figure out what to do if I read a one <coughs> from the start state. If I read a 1, then that's the first part of a pair. So we're going to assume that we're at pairs, starts of pairs, if we're at the start state, right? Mm -hmm. So if I get a 0, I'm happy, right? I can print out 1 and then go back to the start state. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I have to do now is figure out what to do when I get 1-1. One, one. Because we've covered three cases so far, and there's only four. So now if I get a one, I need to go to some kind of carry state. So I can print a one. You print, print a zero. Sorry, print zero. zero here. And I know I have a carry. So now we have to figure out what to do when we get 
like we've read a column and we know we have a carry, we've already printed out the digit that it makes. So now we have to do, figure out what to do if we get another pair from the carry. If you get a zero, you just print one. No, now the no, thing no, is, is that I have to read yet. the next column. I have mm. to do a whole set. So what I have to do is kind of like the start state, I'm going to have to do all, all four possibilities of the next column. Right? Mm -hmm. So if I get a zero, then that we've read one digit of the next column. This is my third stage. So carry means I've got some kind of one that's got to add on to everything that I'm doing so far. Right? So if I get a zero and then I get another zero, I know I'm just going to end up printing a one. Mm -hmm. If I get another one, because I just want to make sure I print out the right thing in this transition right here. If I get a zero and then get a one, I'm going to have to output a zero. So I actually don't want to output anything yet. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So this means at this state right here is our sum right now is still what? Mm. Sum equals one and I need to get one more bit. Now if I get a zero, then I just need to print a digit of one, right? Mm -hmm. and, go back to the start. and I can go back to the start. So zero means print one and I've got rid of the carry <laughs> and I go back to the start. If I get a one, I need to print a zero and still carry. So which state do I need to go to? Back to carry. Yeah. Back to carry. So if I get a one, then I print zero and I'm back to the carry. So now I have to figure out what happens if I get a one from the carry state. Go back to two. No, I don't think carry. I want to go back to two. I, I have a carry, so I need to do. Well, you've got a carry, but. Uh, Depends on whether you. Because it might like be three digits, so I've got to solve this problem also, right? Okay. So if I get a one from this state, I don't want to print anything out yet. If I get a zero, what do I do? Go back to carry and print zero. Go back to carry and print zero. So sorry, that one goes with this. If I get a zero. So I got one one and I got a zero, so I print zero and carry one. So the only other thing I have left is getting a one in my print carry state, so I need to print one and go back to carry. The last thing I have to figure out, so this actually does any possible pair of numbers that I'm, I'm reading in a pair and maybe have a carry. And this does the entire, prints out the entire sum. The only thing we have to worry about is printing the final carry digit when we figure out that we're done. Right? We have to have an accepting state that says the machine is happy and done doing stuff. So if I get a dollar sign, then that means I'm done. That's the only other letter in my alphabet. So if I'm in the start state and I get a dollar sign, I just stop, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're in the carry state, you've got to print out one more one. Right. If I'm in the carry state, I want to do, so let's do, like, let's make an accepting state. So if I'm in the start state and I get a dollar sign, then I don't do anything. I just stay. And if I'm in the carry state, what do I want to do? Print a one. You're in the carry state and you get a dollar sign? Yeah, that's carry state getting a dollar sign. So it's an entirely different way of thinking about how to process stuff. So when you first look at the problem, you're, starting, you're thinking of the whole thing and what do I do with all n bits? But if you can think of it as pairs, like doing one little step at a time, that's what finite state machines do. kind of like a typewriter, the difference between using your computer and a typewriter.
right? <laughs> when you make a mistake on a typewriter, you actually have to go back and do something about it. On a computer, you can delete because it has buffers before it writes your paper. You, know, you can decide when to print. Okay, so let's, let's make sure that this works for the problem that we first started out with. So our input was four ones. Let's see if we can use our machine to do this. Our input was four ones, zero, one, one, zero, and a dollar sign. So we read a one, we go to state two. We read another one, we go to the carry state, and we print it out a zero. and we're in the carry state. So I've got these two. I'm going to cross them out as I get them. In the carry state, I get a 1. That means I go to state 4. I didn't do anything yet. I read another 1. That means I print a 1. So this pair is taken care of. I'm still in the carry state. I get a 0, which means I go to state 3. And then I get a 1, which means I go back to the carry state and print a 0. I did that pair. Now I'm still in the carry state. I get a 1, I go to state 4, and then I get a 0, and I print a 0. I'm back in the carry state. I get a dollar sign, and what happens last? I go to finish, and I print a 1. And if we reverse these, this gives us 18 like we started out with. Isn't that neat? I bet when you look at this thing, you don't think, oh, that does addition. <laughs> okay, are there any questions about this problem? So you, you don't really want to prove that this thing does what you say it does, right? But what would be a way to help someone verify that your diagram actually does what you think it does? By proving it. You could prove it. What would be a way to sort of have someone be able to eyeball it? Because you can't eyeball this, right? You can do certain well-chosen cho test, test cases. Convert it to a table. That's right. Convert it to a table is what I was hoping for, <laughs> is by making a table telling what all the states are and what I think makes me get to those states. And then someone could look at it and then say, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense that when you get to this state, that happened. Okay, so let's make that for this. So what you would do is we need to make a state transition diagram. So it's like a we list the state and then the characters and what happens if we do that. So under each state, we have to say what the states do. So on this, we have a start state. And what we assume here, so this table is to write down all your assumptions, right? In the start state, we assume that we have no carry, and we've read exactly read pairs of bits, right? Either zero or some even number of bits. So this is my assumption. There's no carry, and I've read pairs of bits. And then in the one state, what are my assumptions there? I've read one zero from a pair. So I've only read the first digit of a pair. And that digit is 0. And then in state 2, that's the first digit of the pair where the digit is 1, right? So 
If you can see that, that was just from the start getting a one. So two was read the first digit of the pair and the digit is one. So then we had a carry state, which is kind of like the start state, right? Except we have a carry bit and we've read an even number of inputs. And then we have two other states and those are the ones after we have a carry getting a zero and carry getting a one. So state three was carry getting a zero. And plus a zero digit. And state four is We have a carry and we read a one digit. Then the rest of this diagram would tell me about the transitions, which is what we talked through when we, when we designed it in the first place. This is a lot like um, when you're making a finite state machine, it's, it has some of the same problems as counting. We want states to not overlap. So if I can't describe a state in a, in a way like this, then I want to make better states. You know, so if I'm kind of fuzzy about what got me into a state, I want to make it more precise. So like if I'm counting things, I don't want to count, oh, all this, you know, stuff that might have people that might have blue hair, people that might have brown eyes. I don't want to lump everything together. I want to try to separate them as much as possible into things that are easy to describe. Okay, so let's look back at what we did. So in the start state, when we got, which state do we go to if we get a zero? One. One. So if I get a zero, then I need to go state one. And we printed a zero, right? No. No, you don't print anything. In the start state. Oh, sorry, we didn't print anything. That's right. We never print anything when we went from the start state. So all we did was go to one. In the first state, when we got a zero, what did we do? We got one zero so far, so we just had to print a zero and go back to the start state. Mm It actually might be a little easier to do the table across instead of down. So in the start state, I could also get a 1, right? Mm -hmm. And that sent me to state 2. And then in state 1, if I got a 0, I printed a 0 and went back to start. And if I got a 1, what do I do? Go to start, right? Because I read a pair and I don't have a carry, and I print what? One. Print one. Sorry, this is hard to see. So this isn't something you have to write down. I'm just showing you how you would generate the table so someone can check what you did. And you can check what you did, whether your diagram actually has what you want. And this diagram may be easier to help you write your program anyway, right? Because for each state, you could have an if-then statement or a case statement that said, case zero, print this and go to what state? Case one, print one and go to what state? And in state two, we've already, we read first digit of a pair and the digit is a one. So if I get a zero, I know I'm going to go back to start. And what do I print? A one. 
So this one, where I got a one and then I got another one, is the only one that took me to a carry so far. I go to a carry and I had one plus one, that's zero carry one, so I print a zero in this state. So then the carry was similar to the start state because it was I read a pair of things. So here I'm just going to say where to go. If I get a zero, I go to state three. If I get a one, I go to state four. And that's it for the carry. And the last two will either send me back to start or carry, right? So if I got a carry and I read a zero digit and I got two, another zero, then I get to print out the digit, the carry. And it's gone, so I can go to start. What happens if I get a zero and then a one and I have a carry? Print out a zero and I print a zero and I have another carry. <coughs> And in the last state that we have, we have a carry and then we get a one digit. So if we get a zero, that means we have one plus one, carry which is zero one. carry one. So we go to carry and we print zero. And the last one would be go to carry print one. and print one. state if you get a dollar sign you print one and go to the final state right the last thing I didn't do was put in the dollar sign and we only allowed that from start okay. so from start we just you know we go to finish and from carry was the only other one we allowed we go to finish and on that transition we print one So this, together with the transition diagram, is a good representation for solving this problem. Questions about that? So on your homework, all I'm going to ask you to do is draw some finite state machines from some simple regular expressions and things like that, or vice versa. You might have to write a regular expression from a finite state machine. OK, that's it for today. And what I'd like to do now is, hey, Bob, can you stop the tape? <laughs>